I'll be there for you if you're there for me too. Do diddle do 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 do. Hello. Was Rachel there for him? Was Joey, his best friend, there for him? Was Ross there for him? Well, no. Of course not. Ross was a horrible character. Was Monica, the love of his life, there for him? Was Phoebe there for him? No, none of them were there for him. Matt Perry, the actor who played Chandler Bing, is dead. He died, aged 55. Young man. It's tragic. All that money, fame, in the end, the fictional character had a better life than him, Chandler Bing. Could he be any more dead? So, where did it all go wrong? And just in case, if you're picking up on the weird background noise here, I'm at the harbour, I'm at Bodbergen Harbour. So where did it all go wrong for Chandler Bing? How was it with the, all that wealth he'd accumulated, the fame? He was set for life. He didn't he never he was set for life. He was a massive success. One of the most successful actors of all time. The last episodes, the last seasons of Friends they were making something like ten million an episode, those actors. That's how successful that show was. And yet, despite all of that, despite all of that, died age 55. Now, no doubt, medication and pills, antidepressants, played a role in it. People would come on here and say, oh, well, he had an addiction. He, he, needed, he needed to take all this medication for his addiction. Did he really need to take all these pills for his addiction to alcohol? And that's what we're going to talk about today, addiction. So let's reel back the years. I'm going to go all the way back. There's, a, there's one of those social distancing signs. Oh, my fucking hell. So let's go down there. And let's reel back the years to 2013. And the debate between Peter Hitchens and Chandler Bing. Will he be any more dead? Matt Perry, the actor who played him, right? And they're discussing addiction on Newsnight. He's just here on Newsnight. And Peter Hitchens is contesting whether addiction is even real. Does it exist? Now I'm not going to get into that, I would urge you to watch the interview, it's a good one. you got two people, two very talented people, jostling against each other. What would have been really great if you just got the two of them and put them in the room together for like half an hour. No moderator, just like the two of you just go at it. That would, been, that, that would, that would just be classic television. Right, so. The most revealing thing about that is, about that debate between them two, is afterwards we learned from Peter Hissens, the journalist. He, he wrote about it. And we learned that Matt Perry, Chandler Bing, had an entourage. An entourage. How American. Is that? How 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 do you get an entourage? How how does that happen? Like here in Ireland, e even in the UK, if you manage to become a successful actor, let's say a comedian, even a big name like Steve Coogan, 
Alan Partridge. He could just go about like an ordinary person. He could just get on the train, go somewhere, go into a museum, go to the cinema or whatever. And like nobody would make anything of it. Like let's say I got successful, right? Some mad chance. Here in my hometown of Bob Riggan, I'd always just be that EJ Kev Foy. Now, I, 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 could, I could be a billionaire and I could come back to this town, Bob Riggan, and everyone just would look at me. There's your man, that big EJ Kev Foy. And I'd be walking down the street like an ordinary person, and someone would probably shout out the window, Kev Foy! As certain people do in this town when they see me for some reason. Yeah, Matt Perry had an entourage. I have no doubt that this entourage is one of the reasons why this guy ended up dead so young. I mean, how do you get it? How do you get an entourage? You must be the most suggestible person in the world, most feeble minded person. In the I don't want to insult the guy. But if, I mean, you must be weak minded to find yourself with an entourage. I'd imagine what happened is, you know, some guy learns that Matt Perry has some issues, addiction issues with alcohol or whatever, and uh, yeah, somehow he gets his number, he rings him up. Hi, it's Matt Perry here. Yeah, yeah, Matt, man. Yeah, yeah, we're good friends. We go back a long time. We once, we once walked past each other on the street there. New York, I saw you there one time. I waved at you and all. Oh, right, yeah, what's your name again? Jeff, Jeff Silverstone. Don't you remember me, man? Oh, right, Jeff, how are things? Yeah, I hear you're having some problems with alcohol. Yeah, I've got, got a few problems with the old drink. This guy probably, this guy probably like... Look, man, you got to get on my program. You got to, uh, you, you, you got to get on my twelve-step program. Otherwise, you're going to end up dead. I don't, I don't know how. I don't even know how you're still alive, man. Well, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, I have a bit of a problem, but I think I can deal with it. No, man, no, man. What you got is an illness. You got an illness, man. And this guy sort of weasels his way into his life. And I imagine that's the same with all the entourage. I mean, uh, do, you, do you go to the Golden Pages and look them up? You know? And it's like they have all these different roles as well. I mean, he probably has his, his fitness instructor. His own chef, probably. Probably got some guy who pretends to be his best friend. Like, like in the Truman Show sort of thing. Like, you know, man, I've always, I'll always be there for you, man. I'll always be there for you. We've known each other since March, when you hired me for a thousand pound a day. Right, man? That's how far back we go, man. I'll always be here for you. I'll always be here for you, bro. Same with this other guy. How he got into this whole... I've got an addiction to alcohol problem. It's an illness. This guy wheels his way into his life. He starts spoon-feeding him crap. He starts charging him, you know... X amount of money, probably bloody millions, to get on this program because you got an you got an illness. It's an illness. Alcohol's an illness. But first, man, you, first you gotta go. You gotta go to my rehab. It's owned by me, Silverstone. It's called Silverstone Rehab, and it's owned by me, and it's gonna cost you. <laughs> you, you see, this guy, this guy spent nine million on rehab. Nine million. Do you think anybody has an illness that takes? An, Ill, an addiction to alcohol, an illness to alcohol, that costs nine million to cure. Does that sound normal? I mean, if only everybody had had, had if only every alcoholic had uh, nine million to spend, and he still ends up dead. Yeah, he he he, he cured his alcohol problem. Because he was on a load of medication, which is no doubt to do with this entourage guy. 
get these, get these yes men, these donkeys, these sycophants nodding around you, reinforcing you. You know, define me, define me, define me. Make me a victim, make me a victim, make me a victim. This guy probably, and all of them probably were at it. You know, man, you, 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 your, your, your addiction to alcohol, that, that's, that's, that's an allergy, man, okay? An allergy? You're saying I have an allergy? No, man, it's an allergy. When you have a drink, an allergy kicks in and you can't stop drinking. Oh, I see, it, 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 it's, it's an allergy to an allegory. Is that what you're saying? No, man, you're not getting it. You're not thick enough, man, what I'm saying. If you're wondering what I'm on about, in the interview with Peter Hitchens, in the debate with Peter Hitchens, he claimed that, he, Matt Perry, claimed that his alcohol addiction was an allergy, not allegory. <laughs> At first, I thought I was mishearing him saying, "You saying Al allegory? I've got an allegory." No, man, it's an allergy. When you drink alcohol, you can't stop drinking. That's an allergic reaction. It's a queer allergic reaction. But no doubt, someone else will put that idea in his head, and that—that's the entourage. That's the entourage putting crap in your head. If he had his own voice, if he was doing his own reasoning, eventually he would have came to the conclusion that. The reason why he has a drink and can't stop drinking afterwards is because he likes getting drunk. As far as I'm aware, everybody has that addiction. Everybody therefore is, is, is allergic to alcohol. I know when I have a drink, I don't stop until I pretty much pass out. Okay? I think that's normal. So, I think if he had just kept on drinking, he would have been okay. He would have been healthy. Instead, because there's many, 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 many alcoholics who live to a ripe old age. And it's, it's actually very easy to be a healthy alcoholic. Once you keep it confined to night time, exercise, eat well. Instead, Matt Perry fall, falls into this victimhood, created by these sycophants. This entourage. You're telling him he's got this. It's an illness, man. It's an allergic reaction. You're allergic to alcohol. Yeah, I'm, I'm allergic. What do I do? You gotta take all these pills. Why don't I just stay away from alcohol? That voice, by the way, is me pretending to be Matt Perry. We haven't worked out yet. Why don't I, if, if I'm allergic, surely I just stay away from alcohol. No, man, you're not getting it, man. You're not getting it. You don't realize you're allergic until you have a drink. Then when you've had a drink, you can't stop drinking. That's why you need to take all these pills. These pills will stop you. These pills will cure you of your allergic reaction. So, now I won't have to drink. That's it, man. You're finally getting it. You're finally getting the allergy. I'm sorry, the allergy. That's how your allergy's working. Yeah. And the, and the debate with Hitchens. You can, just, you can just see it afterwards. You can see it afterwards. That, that reinforcement happening. You know. The, all these yes men. Donkeys. Nodding donkeys. Coming up to him after the debate. Oh man. You, you totally crushed that Hitchens guy out there today. You showed him he was boss. I was constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the man. You're the man. And if you look at him in that interview, in that debate, sorry, and compare him to more recent pictures, like two years ago, there was a picture of him with an I got vaccinated t shirt. No doubt one of his sycophants told him, got him to put this t shirt on so they could sell this crap online. Get a picture of Matt. Hey, Matt, Matt, man, can you, can you put on this t shirt I made, man? Yeah, sure, no bother. And he looks like shit. He looks absolutely shit. This was two years ago. He looks like absolute crap. He's really aged in the last ten years. And then the most recent picture of him that I saw 
Uh, it was for his book. Yeah, he's gone into old age prematurely. So yeah, these sycophants around him, they don't, no doubt they hastened his demise. You know, fitting in the structure probably like, Oh man, these muscles are building your confidence and building your mind. You totally crushed that Hitchens guy. His chef, probably his personal chef and his entourage somehow got in. Just died, man. It's totally got your metabolism up. You were, you were, you were, you were dancing like a butterfly, stinging like a bee out there. No, man. You, you are totally right. You have an illness. It's an illness. You've got to take these pills, take these pills, take these pills. It's probably his whole life was organized around this entourage who had managed to weasel their way in. So they probably had, a, you know, this is the exercise you got to do. This is the diet you got to be on. These are the pills you got to take. This is the place you got to go. This is the t-shirt you got to wear to sell this sell this craft that I'm selling. All of them around them. And the best thing he should have done is should have sacked a lot of them. And maybe made his own, own his own entourage of his own mind and his own personality. That's the way it's supposed to happen. Or even better, hire Peter Hitchens. So he wouldn't be in this constant state of victimhood. But that's it. That's today. That's what I want to talk about. So I don't have an entourage. Best thing you could have done is just when they're when they're being offered twenty million an episode. If I was if I was him, I would have said, you know what? Give it to this charity. I'll take a hundred thousand. And then, a hundred thousand, that'd be more than enough money. A hundred thousand an episode? Yeah, absolutely, I'd have enough money for that. For the rest of my life to be happy. And then, when these idiots ring up, trying to weasel into my life, I just I don't have the money. Don't have the money, man. Don't, I gave it all away. I'm free of that crap. I'm free of materialism. But anyway, we're going, we're, we're digressing now onto other topics. Right. So... That's the that's today's video. Goodbye. That's today's podcast. I mean, goodbye. Have a good one.